What is up, everybody? It is Zach from at Premier Soccer Investing coming at you with yet another Slap Socks FC YouTube video. Let's get into it. First, a little La Liga update. Madrid has been playing well so far this season. They've definitely surprised a few people, including me, with how well they played at the start of the season. Carlo Ancelotti's men have really been carried by these two, Karim Benzema and Vinicius Jr. Both of them have been balling out. Madrid's looking to make a run at the La Liga title this year. I still think Atletico are the favorites, and I think Atletico are the ones that are going to be the winners of La Liga when it's all said and done. But so far, Real Madrid has done a good job of making it a title race. Moving on, more La Liga news. Ansu Fati made his long-awaited return, and I'm going to get into him more a little bit at the end of this episode. But he marked his return with a substitute appearance and a brilliantly taken goal to help Barcelona to a 3-0 win over Levante, which they desperately needed. Yeah. Uh, I'll get more into Fati in a bit. Also from this Barcelona game, Serginho Des put in a man-of-the-match performance for Barcelona playing as a left-back, not as a right-back, but as a left-back. And he's he's in an interesting situation in his career right now because he's really – he's become a week-in and week-out starter for uh, Barcelona. However, his role in the U.S. men's national team has fluctuated based on matchups and the formation the U.S. is playing – because he's not the world's best defender. And in CONCACAF, you need to have outside backs who can at least defend a little bit, which is definitely not Serginho's death's strength. Albeit he has a ton of quality. He's brilliant in the attacking third. But it's just tough to play him when you need to be able to defend in a back four if you're in that formation. But if he keeps putting in performances like that, it'll be hard to keep him out of the U.S. men's national team. More U.S. Men's National Team news. Ricardo Pepe, the hot name at the moment, who's been balling out teams all over Europe, want him. Bayern's been linked. AC Milan, a host of teams in Italy. Supposedly, Premier League teams have been sniffing around, too. This week's Ajax was in Vancouver to watch him and met with his representatives. I actually would really like this transfer for Pepe. He'd go into Ajax. Get used to playing in Europe, get a ton of experience, be their number nine, hopefully be playing in meaningful Champions League matches, and then use that as a launching pad to a transfer to a, a mega club. I think that would be a great move for his career and better than going to a place like a Bayern Munich where he would be a backup. And instead, he could go into a team where he'd be a focal point. I think that's the best move for his career. It's the best move for him in regards to his national team prospects because we need him played week in and week out because he's only 18 years old. We still need him in the team maturing, go, growing, scoring goals, and just showing his quality in general. Then on to the Bundesliga. Holland was out for Dortmund against Mönchengladbach, and they sorely missed him, losing 1-0. Dahoud with the red card in the 40th minute. This Dortmund team really, really struggles without Holland, and at this point in uh, in the season. As Guardiola once called Tottenham the Harry Kane team, Dortmund really is the early Holland team at this point. And it's hard not to be when you have the, one of the best strikers in the world in your team in Holland. On to the Premier League. Villa shocked United 1-0, uh, late winner. Then Bruno Fernandes, who was picked to take the penalty ahead of Cristiano Ronaldo, which raised some eyebrows around the world. Missed the penalty. Emmy Martinez, the hero for Aston Villa, as he was able to get in Fernandez's head and caught, it helped him sky the ball over the bar and then really gave it to the United fans behind the goal after. It was pretty funny to watch. But United still not the best result for them, obviously, but they're still one of the main contenders for the title this year. The problem is consistency. Is Do they have – enough to really challenge over a 38-game season. That's starting to come into question with this result and the results midweek in the Cups, too. Another title contender stumbled a bit, Liverpool going to Brentford in their raucous stadium 
and play into a, a hugely, hugely entertaining 3-3 draw. Curtis Jones, he's one of the big-name rookies to come out of last year's products, scored a brilliant, brilliant goal to, to help Liverpool draw a thunderbolt of a strike from outside the box. But I have to say, if you haven't watched Brentford yet, do yourself a favor and start watching them. They play amazing, entertaining football. Their fans are awesome. Their kits are nice. They're just a really fun team to watch in general. They have an amazing story, too. First time in the Premier League in over 70 years. Then the game I really don't want to talk about. This one was painful. North London Derby got passed by Arsenal on the table, got a Absolutely obliterated by them, too. Tottenham is a, a bad, bad football team right now. We are not good. And it's going to stay that way for some time. I just, it's not great. Emil Smith Rowe balled out. Sokka with a goal. Arsenal's two brightest youngsters. They smashed Tottenham and leapt ahead of us in the table. Yeah. Really tough, tough game for me as a Spurs fan. Don't want to talk about it anymore. On to the next. City versus Chelsea. Matchup between probably the two biggest favorites to win the title. Yeah, Pep Guardiola finally got his tactics right in a big match. Was able to really squeeze out Chelsea and stop them from really having any meaningful attacks. And they grinded out a 1-0 result. Jesus the non-striker striker scoring the winning goal for them. This is a massive result for City that it's showing Chelsea that they're not going to be able to walk to the title this season and that they're really going to give them a challenge. But I still think in the end, when it's all wrapped up, Chelsea will be Premier League champions. But this was definitely a big result for City and a big result, big for title race implications. And then moving on to this week, Champions League is back. Second round of games for every team this week. And, boy, we got it started with a smashing one. PSG playing Man City. And then also Leipzig against Club Brugge. But City Man versus PSG is the game we've all been looking for. Messi versus Pep. Plastic oil-rich club versus oil-rich club. Big-name players versus big-name players. This game has it all. And Leo Messi is back in training for PSG after... His knock he picked up a couple weeks ago. This is a big match for PSG. They they really could use a result here after drawing Club Brugge 1-1. A win or a draw is paramount for them in this match. And I think this is the one where Messi finally breaks his mini drought he in, he's in and he'll score a couple goals in City or and PSG. I think will win this three to one. Moving on to Group B, FC Porto versus Liverpool, Milan versus Atletico Madrid. Two really good matchups. Both are probably going to be low-scoring defensive struggles here. But these will definitely be fun to watch. Look again for Curtis Jones to build on his performance against Brentford. And does Jao Felix get into the team for Atletico? We'll see. Probably not the way they've played him so far. And a Group C, Ajax Beskitas, that should be an entertaining one. Both teams play really attacking football. This game, That game should have lots of goals, lots of action, end-to-end -end all around. And then Dortmund's playing Sporting. If Holland's back, Dortmund will run through Sporting. If he's not, it's going to be a tight match. Group D, we have Shakhtar versus Inter. And then a battle of the two winners from the first slate of games, Madrid versus FC Sheriff. Inter needs a result here. They do not – if they don't get a win, they're really in danger of following their streak of not making out of the Champions League group stage. For I think if they don't get out this year, would be the fifth or sixth year in a row they haven't been able to do so, which is not only a huge loss for them sporting-wise, but financially too, especially with Italian clubs being low on cash at the moment. Advancing the Champions League would be really helpful for, the, for their bottom line. Group E, we have Bayern versus Dynamo Kiev. Byron, this will be a smashing from them. And then Barcelona, Benfica. I, Benfica is definitely a strong team, and Barca hasn't been at their best. But with Fati coming back and them on a winning 
coming off a win now, I think Barcelona will be able to to uh, rebound from their loss to Bayern in the last round of Champions League games and win this one. And then in Group F, Atalanta versus Young Boys, two big overachieving clubs. We have Jordan Ciabicho for Young Boys in that game. The American, who scored the winner against United, should be a good match. Both teams are pretty evenly balanced. I give it to Atalanta, though, due to their Champions League experience. And then Man United will be a real. I think United bounces back and gets a win, gets their first win of this Champions League season in that one. And then a Group G, Salzburg versus Lille. Hopefully, Aronson has a big game there. Aronson versus uh, Awea, the Battle of the Americans. That should be fun to watch. And then another American in this Wolfsburg Sevilla match with uh, John Brooks. Though I think Sevilla is going to be able to take this one. And then last but not least, Group H, Zenit versus Malmo. Zenit should be the stronger side here. And then a, a match between two huge clubs and Juventus Chelsea, though. Juventus isn't a great football team at the moment. Granted, they did win this past weekend in Serie A. Chelsea's still a far stronger side, and I expect them to win pretty comfortably here. And then lastly, I said I was going to talk about Fati more. Here it is. So is this is contenders, rookie base, PSA 10. Card reached a high point of over $800, around $860. And then obviously huge dip with his injuries and knee surgeries and the like. But we see it starting to rise back up, especially in the past week. It run up about 15%. In a week, it's based really on his goal. His debut, fake debut, really was almost a almost a new debut for him. Yeah, this card it it definitely has a lot of room to grow, but just prospecting is so risky in general. And then if you're gonna take a guy like Fati with the injury history he has, no meniscus in one of his knees, I think you need to fully prepare yourself for. Any investment you put into him going to zero, and if you're comfortable with that risk, take it because there's definitely the opportunity for this card to rise back to what it once was. But again, the injury history, it's really not normally sustainable long term to have a long career playing with a knee like that. I hope he does because Fati's awesome, super fun to watch and all of that. But again, just word of caution with Fati. But I, I expect this card to rise more in the next couple of weeks, especially if he can score uh, in the Champions League this week. We're really going to start to see some movement because Fati is one of the most popular players in the soccer card world. He was the face of the 2019 rookie class along with Holland. And he has a bunch of big cards out there that people like to buy, sell, collect, and invest in. So there's definitely room for growth. Just you got to be careful when investing in Fati. Uh, that's going to do it for this week. As always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. DM me. You can roast me about Tottenham being a bad team and Arsenal killing us. I'll take it, I promise. And I'll respond back to, though it pains me to take, take the jokes I've been getting this week from everybody. But, yeah, thanks for watching.